Level loading. Right now, it's possible to change the grid shape while playing the game via the grid debug menu, but we don't have any way to change the level with the environment behind it. So it makes it pretty useless to be able to change the grid shape since the environment doesn't fit anymore. And that's why we are adding this feature today, so let's get to it. In Unreal, the first thing I'm gonna do is make sure that all my levels are blueprint loaded. So I'm gonna go on the left right here. I have my L hexagon which has the blue dot right here, so it's blueprint loaded. Same thing for the triangle. But it's not the case for the square, it doesn't have the blue dot. So I'm going to right click on it, change streaming method, blueprint which makes it blueprint loaded only. So right now, if I press play, I should not see any level in my environment. Perfect, that's exactly what we want. Let's press stop. And then we're going to go create the blueprint, which is going to be responsible of loading all the levels. So I'm gonna go in blueprints, core, and create a new folder, which I'm gonna name level loading. And open it. And here, create a new blueprint class of type actor, bp underscore level loading. And open it. Here I'm going to go directly into the event graph and create myself a new function, which I'm gonna name load level. For this function to work, it's going to know which level we want to load. And in this case, we are gonna use strings. So I'm going to create a new input. For the variable name, it's gonna be level. And for the variable type, it's gonna be a string. So this variable right here is gonna contain the name of the level we want to load. And there's two ways to load levels. The first one is if you right click and search for load level instance, load level instance by name, this one, which we could simply provide the name and it will do all the job for us. So let's just see if it works. I'm going to connect the level into the level name, connect the pin to the execution pin right here. And then in the event graph, I'm going to call my load level function. So back in the event graph, drag my load level function in there. And I'm gonna type the name of one of my levels. So in this case, I'm gonna try L square. So L underscore square. Then I can delete the two other nodes, compile, save, and go back in the main tab and make sure to add the BP level loading into your persistent level. So I'm just going to double click on the persistent level and drop the blueprint in it. And now if I press play, this blueprint should load my L square. I'm gonna press play. Here we go. My L square is now loaded, perfect. So that means that this function works. So this thing right here, it works and it works fine. But I actually had some issues with it a few times here and there. So instead I started to use another way. It's a bit more complex, but I think it's better overall, but eh, maybe it's just me. But in this case, I'm gonna use that other way. So I'm going to delete this node right here and I'm gonna search for get streaming level, get streaming level. Then we can connect the level name to the package name. Unreal is going to convert it to a name for us. And then once we have the level right here, so we give Unreal the name, Unreal gives us back the level. And on that level, so from the level, you can set should be loaded. So, and you can connect it to the start of the function. So, so should the level be loaded? So let's say if I compile and I press play right now, I don't see anything. But I can see on the left that my L square is not grayed out. And it is because this level right here is loaded. Those are not. So the level hexagon is not loaded. The level triangle is not loaded. The L square is loaded. Same thing as my lighting. But the difference is that the L square is not visible. So that means that we have control on if the level should be loaded and also if the level should be visible. So we're just gonna make it visible for now. I'm going to go back here. Still from the get streaming level, I'm going to search for set level visible. Set should be visible. Like so. And now if I check that checkbox also, the level should be loaded and visible. If I press play, here we go. It's the same thing. My level is loaded and visible. Perfect. But what happens if you try to load multiple levels? Let's go back in the blueprint and go in the event graph right here. Here after my load level, I'm going to add a small delay. So delay, which is gonna be, let's say two seconds. Then what I'm gonna do is copy paste the load level node right after, and I'm going to try to load another level. So L underscore triangle. And then I'm gonna do the same thing a third time. So just move it all the way here and try to load L underscore hexagon. So now if I go back in the level and press play, I should see the square at the beginning, then the triangle and then the hexagon, but they are all on top of each other. And that's an issue. And in the case of this project, I pretty much only want to have one level loaded at a time. 
So I'm just going to keep track of which level I loaded previously and unload it before I try to load a second one, which I'm gonna go do in the load level, in the load level function here. And to keep track which level I just loaded, I will simply save the name into a variable. So I'm just going to move it over there and promote the level input as a variable, which I'm gonna name level loaded. I'm going to connect it to the bools on the right and also to the pin right there. But before loading the new level and setting the variable, I will make sure to unload the previous level. So I'm just going to move this a little bit down like so. I will disconnect it from the load level right there and I will create a sequence node though. So sequence, which I can then connect the second pin to the bit of code that loads my level like so. And before trying to load the level, I will unload the level. So I'm just going to copy paste those nodes right here, connect them to the sequence like so and pass it the variable name like that. So that way the function starts, I first try to unload, oh, actually I have to uncheck those checkboxes. I first try to unload the level, and then I update the level name with the variable passed and input, and I try to load it. Okay, let's go try that. Compile, save, play. Okay, I see an error at the bottom, but other than that, it seemed to work. I only have one level loaded at a time, perfect but let's go see what the error is. Let's press stop and the message log appears. Here we can read assess none trying to read get streaming level return value. Okay, let's click on the link at the end of the line. I'm gonna close the message log. It's right here. So it accessed none trying to read the output of get streaming value. So this level right here is invalid right now. And this happens only the first time. And it is because the level loaded variable is not set at the beginning of the game and it is empty by default. So the first time we load a level, there's nothing to unload. So we're trying to access a level that doesn't exist and then we are trying to unload it, which we should not really have to do because we don't have a level that is loaded right now. So I'm just going to make sure that this level right here is valid before trying to unload it. So is valid. I'm gonna take the second one and I'm gonna connect it like that. So now that should have fixed the error. I'm gonna compile, play. I have my square, I have my triangle and then my hexagon with no errors in between, perfect. But now what happens if you're trying to load a level that doesn't exist? So I'm just going to go back in the event graph and make a typo, let's say in triangle. Then I'm gonna compile and go see how it looks in game. Load the square, load the triangle, an error, and then I load the next one and it works. Okay, so same error, access none trying to read property. Okay, let's click on the link at the end of the line. And right now it is right here. Same thing, it tries to load a level that doesn't exist because we made a typo in the name. So we're gonna do the same thing and we're going to check if the level is valid before loading it. So is valid and take the second one. Then connect it like so. But in the case of a load level, we don't really want Unreal to give us an error, but we might want to catch it ourselves. That way, if we made a typo in the name, let's say the same way I did right now for the level triangle, we'd like to know that we just passed an invalid level name. So let's just do a print string, print string. I'm gonna do like the previous one, so append to combine both strings together, and I'm gonna write error dash, I'm gonna add the name of the function, so load level dash invalid level name. And then I'm going to connect the level loaded variable into the B, that way we're gonna know which name we just passed to that function. I'm going to expand the print string, make the color red instead of blue, like so, and I'm gonna move the duration to let's say five instead. And now if we compile and press play, I'm gonna hide the grid right there, but yeah, I should have an error. Error, loaded level, invalid level name, L trying for. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. And it's probably going to help us debug the game in the case we send an invalid level name. Okay, let's stop and go back in level loading. And now I'm going to go back in the graph and I'm gonna try something else. Instead of having three different levels right here, I'm going to have three times the same level. So L square, L square, and L square. And now if I press play and I try to execute that code, you can see in the top right corner there there's a flicker. My level is still loaded and it works, but there's a flicker in the top right corner. And it is happening because Unreal tried to unload the level and then reload it again. So it deloaded all the assets and then show them back up, which is pretty useless to do. So let's just go prevent that. I'm gonna stop, go back in level loading and open my function. And here, before executing any of the code, I'm just gonna check to make sure that the level passed as input is not the same as the level already loaded. So I'm just going to drag from level, search for not equal, not equal string, and I'm going to connect it to level loaded. And then I'm gonna drag out of it and search for if, which is going to create a branch that I can connect like so. 
That way, if the level is already loaded, I'm not gonna try to load it again, which is not going to call unload, then unload on the same level name. Okay, let's go see. Compile, play. My level is loaded. And then I don't have any flicker on the right because it's not trying to load it again and again and again. Perfect. But I still want to change another thing. So I'm just gonna stop and go back in level loading. I'm gonna go in the event graph. And right here we are setting the level that we want to load at the beginning of the game. But I'd like to have it in a variable instead of having it hard coded right here. That way we can select the actor in the world and then we can simply set the level that we want to appear at the beginning of the game. So I'm just going to start by deleting all that because we don't need it anymore. And instead of having the level written right there, I'm going to use the level loaded variable, like so. Then since I want to access it in the editor, I'm going to make it editable in the editor by clicking on the little eye icon right there. And then I'm going to set a default value, so L underscore square. And now if I compile and go try, nothing appears, but it should spawn the square level. And if I stop and select my level loading actor, right here, I can see that the level loaded variable should be the square. Okay, so I'm gonna go back in the level and I'm gonna go back in the load level function. And here it doesn't work because we are comparing it with the loaded level variable, which is the one that we are using to pass it into the function. So they are already equal, so nothing happens because the false is called right there. So what I'm gonna do is just add a way to bypass this check right here. In the case we want to load the level that was already loaded, but we really want to reload it or something like that. So what I'm gonna do is just add another input right here, which is gonna be a boolean and I'm gonna name it force. And then I'm going to do a or operation in between the force and this variable right here to see if I want to execute the whole code. So I'm just going to make myself a bit of space and search for or, or boolean, that one. Then I'm gonna connect it like so, and then back to the if. That way if force is equal to true or if the not equal name is equal to true, it will fire the true pin right there. And now I just have to go back in the graph and make sure to check the checkbox right there. Now if I compile and press play, I should see my level opening. And if I select my actor in the world, I can now change the level name right here. So L underscore hexagon, let's say. And then if I press play, I see my hexagon level, perfect. The last thing we have to do is to hook this load level function into our debug menu. And I'm simply going to do that in the grid tab because it's going to be easier to access. So I'm going to go in debug menu, tabs, grid tab. And right here, what I'm going to do is duplicate all that. So I'm just going to collapse this other border and control W on this border. It appeared at the bottom, so I'm just going to move it all the way to the top. I'm going to rename the text here to environment and I'm going to delete all the spin boxes. So we're now left with the combo box that I'm going to rename. So combo box underscore environment. And then I'm gonna go on the right and change the default options. So instead of square, I'm going to write L square because it's the name of my level. Same thing for L hexagon and L triangle. And for the default value, I'm going to set it to L square, something like that. Then I can compile. And we now see that the input are dated, perfect. Then to call our function, we're gonna use the event that happened when we are changing the value of the combo box right here. So I'm just going to scroll all the way down and create the on selection change event. And here, to be able to call the level loading function, we have to access the BP level loading. So we're just going to go do that in the construct. Right after the grid here, I'm just going to do another get actor of class. I'm gonna change the name to level loading, BP level loading, and I'm gonna promote it into a variable, which I'm gonna name level loading. And then I'm gonna connect that in between like so. And we now have access to the BP level loading. So I can go all the way down here, get my level loading, and call the load level function. I'm not gonna check force, but I'm gonna connect the level name like that. And that's it. It should now work. I'm gonna compile and go try that. Play. If I open my tab grid, I can see my new combo box. It's written L square, even though the hexagon level is loaded. We're gonna fix that in a little bit, but first let's see if it works. So I'm gonna change and try to load L triangle. Okay, that's good, it worked. L hexagon, it worked. And L square, it worked. Okay, perfect. Why isn't the value updated right here at the beginning of the game? Well, it's because we're never setting it to the default value. So I'm gonna stop, go back in tab grid and go here at the top where we are setting the default values. I'm going to double click on the function to go inside it and we're gonna go 
at the end to set the selected option of our new combo box. So I'm gonna get combo box string environment, do a set selected option on it, like so. And for the option, what I'm gonna do is get the level loading, get loaded level, and connect it. That way in the set default values, after we are getting the level loading, so we're getting the level loading, then we're calling set default values, and we're gonna use the loaded level to set the option of our combo box. So now when I press play, I should now have the L hexagon as first option because the L hexagon level is loaded. And it should update, let's say if I go select my level loading actor in the level and change the default level to L square, let's say. And now if I press play, the default option is square and my default loaded level is square, perfect. And there's one last thing to do and it is the none option right here. It actually works, like it unloads everything and we don't have any level loaded, but it prints us an error message because let's say if I hide my grid, error loaded level, invalid level name, none, because the level name we just passed is invalid. But we would like to be able to unload everything without having a red error message at the top. So let's just go ignore the error message in the case that we are passing none as input value because we know that it is not a level name. So I'm just going to stop, go back in the level loading, go in my load level function, and go all the way at the end where we are printing the error. Before doing it, we're just gonna check if the level name is not equal to none. So I'm just going to do that. Level loaded, not equal, string, I'm gonna type none, and then I'm gonna do a if right here. So we're just going to print that error message in the case that the input name is not a valid level name, but is also not none. So now we can compile and everything should work as expected. So I can play, I can change my environment to hexagon, triangle or nothing, and it all works without printing any error. Great. So now we are able to set it to let's say square with the square grid, and then hexagon with the hexagon grid, and then triangle with the triangle grid. And we can have any kind of grid on a, an empty level if we want to debug only the grid without the environment. Perfect, that's pretty much everything I wanted to do today, so I'm gonna see you in the next one. Bye bye!